Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good morning, good evening. So really welcome to our new point of view, our digital show, which anticipates the physical show that we will have next upcoming September. Today, Tuesday 21st July, we are so glad to welcome back our virtual forum with a very special guest speakers, Jacqueline Brennan, the CEO of Creative Duality and co-founder of F Epsilon Line. So Jacqueline, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm happy to be here today with the Linea Pell community. Yeah, thank you so much to, to come back after one month that we met in our latest Now and Together. So we are so excited to have you here, Jacqueline, and also welcome Shivan Dizay, CEO of Big Things. Welcome, Shivan. Hi, thanks uh, a lot, Arietta. It's a pleasure to be back again. And of course, we cannot miss Chandralika Azarika, the co-founder of Big Things. Welcome again, you, do, you two couples. So, so nice to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Perfect. So today we are really enjoyed to speak about the fashion duality, which was one of the topics that we face to to talk more or less one month ago. But today we said, okay, let's, do, let's learn how to simplify and implement digital innovation. So this is interesting for me to open this discussion with you guys and see what, what's going on now and which are the elements that are taking about this kind of digital transformation. So I think, Shivan, maybe you can start to introduce what, what's going on right now. So what's happening right now in the whole world, uh, not just the fashion or the leather industry, is that the pandemic has changed how businesses do business. There's uh, limited physical interactions. People can't meet in person. And the whole world is looking at being able to take their product offering out to a wider consumer base using digital technology to showcase products, to uh, digitize interactions. And this is something that we are seeing as the new normal, digital transformation becoming the way that we do business and live our lives. Oh, and it maybe it's interesting if we share the video because I remind that last time you prepare one way to apply the materials and now you wanted to upgrade this, this kind of aspect because of course, you know, everyone was so attracted by this kind of demo that now they want to understand, okay, now what should I do? So can I go, can I go forward? So because I like to show again for some of the participants and haven't seen. In this case, what you're seeing is a leather showroom. Um, and different kinds of leather, different movements, different simulations, and being able to showcase a variety of materials on the same objects. So you can actually use it to visualize how different leathers or even different fabrics could look on, on different surfaces, all with a touch of a button. You, in this case, you take one leather sample, you apply it to a handbag. You can take another, apply it to a mobile phone case. And there's so many different examples of how you can do this. Um, leather is such a versatile material. You can use it in so many different ways to deliver completely different looks and feels for so many different objects. And that is what digital can help you showcase. Traditionally, you always have to build samples of these products to showcase how each leather would look on them. And it's not enough to pick up a swatch 
and, and then try and imagine how a sofa or a belt or a wallet would look. But over here, using a digital uh, technique, you can instantly switch out different leathers and instantly visualize. Like in the case of the jackets that you're seeing on screen right now, you can instantly visualize any number of different materials and leathers on them as you, as you uh, watch. Just again, with the touch of a button, it's as simple as shifting tracks when listening to music. Um, yeah, we could. Yeah, you know, I, I just stopped uh, a couple of pictures because actually this is really what is going on now. After one month, many, many material companies are starting to showcase their materials. And most of the time, one of the biggest topics is to showcase really the essential elements of the structure. And I think this is a perfect example of, of what you showcase at which is brilliant. Thank you. And I think, I think also this is depending of the typology of material that you use it. Absolutely. It? So not, not every leather gets applied on every surface and each one behaves differently. They have different properties on bending, on stiffness, on flexibility. And uh, not all leathers are going to be applicable to all different surfaces. And that's really what this tries to showcase. The material properties along with the use case of those materials. Cool. But now I, I remember you, you wanted also to speak about virtual avatars. So what's going on in virtual avatars? Sure. So a big part of what we do at Big Things for the fashion industry is digitize uh, people. So that's actually Chandralika's avatar uh, that has been digitized. We instantly digitize clothing using artificial intelligence so that you see this clothing on your avatar. You know how it looks and fits and behaves. And we use this technology at one of the world's first completely virtual fashion shows, which was displayed at Fashion Innovations uh, fashion, uh, fashion Show at the New York Fashion Week on June 5th and uh, and in this fashion show, uh, which is just a little bit uh, ahead in the video, um, is, uh, is used in- Yeah, but I like to see you again. In, I like in, to see you again. <laughs> totally, so it uses the same technology to generate the models. So they are real models, real life models that have been converted into avatars wearing completely digital clothing from 10 real designers around the world. And you see a lot of the ocean in this because it was around the theme of the World Oceans Day. So you see the sea moving, sea creatures and so on. So you can actually uh, visualize exactly how clothing looks, fits and behaves even in a virtual fashion show. And virtual showrooms are a way of allowing you to navigate and interact with this kind of clothing. So you're not limited by a 2D interface on a website. Rather, you can actually browse around in a 3D space. You can interact, you can browse clothing in a completely different format. And this applies not only to clothing, but of course, to any sort of furniture, interiors, uh, basically any kinds of products, mm -hmm. even jewelry. So in, in this case where you see you can have a virtual store that showcases jewelry in a much more engaging manner than rather seeing a, a picture on a static web page and having to visualize how it might look and behave on you. Yeah, that's super, super great. I want to go back to see the, the jury talks back because this is really a news that you presented today. And juries really means many other uh, subjects in components, in little elements, in things that are made by metallics and steels and so many different points. And here I have a question because now we are talking so much about uh, 3D printing and also designing your objects and then figure out 
how is the object? So something like digital manufacturing. So last week, we also had a forum about this kind of thing. How is this connection between uh, your part of work and the manufacturer? So we work a lot with 3D objects in any case. All of these objects that you see on your screen are in 3D. So this could essentially be 3D printed, if you like. It doesn't require any additional effort from the design standpoint. We design it in 3D, and then it goes ahead and gets 3D printed and can be ready for real life use. Of course, gemstones are not yet 3D printable, but certainly 3D designs can be used as reference points to design molds, to design the structures in which the jewelry is cast. And there is a lot of application beyond just visual visualization, where it can be applied to real industry to help improve processes. So this is really interesting. But now let me go a little bit inside of a Jacqueline aspect. And you, of course, because now we want to make this becoming, I don't want to say real, because it's already real. Because what you show me now, it's already something going on, very simply. but. Now, Jacqueline, so now imagine all the brands, companies. So what are the problems that brands are facing today? Absolutely, Ori. So right now, the main thing that everyone needs to keep in their mind is every crisis comes with opportunity. Crisis is a time for us to birth creativity. So many of you that are listening on this call are having different new challenges. They're facing obstacles. They're running their business in the midst of a global pandemic. So brands are facing obstacles in terms of sales. We don't have physical retail locations at the moment, meaning everything is going virtual or going online or direct to consumer. Communication to customers, this also changes. Physical experience, so again, it's about using that fashion duality, being able to merge physical and non-physical experiences together, especially right now manufacturing and shipping. We talked a little bit about how manufacturing processes and innovation are changing even at the moment. And of course, sustainability, which is an ongoing conversation, which is more important than ever on what we're facing. So all of, all of the brands that are listening, these are their main obstacles. And there are digital innovations that can help solve some of these problems. So that's what we wanted to shed light on today. They're out there. They're not that expensive, they're easy to implement, and we want to provide solutions. So going into the four types of digital transformations, these are the four key types, business process, business model, domain, cultural, and organizational. These are ways you can use innovation and technology to literally transform your business, automate systems, have better commu communication styles with your employees and your teams, and constantly encourage that source of creativity and innovation. So this is, this is what we're really well, excited to yeah. do. Yeah, let, let me jump inside because if I compare now, let me go back, the, the main problems, so we talk about the physical experience, which is one I wanna touch very strongly. And of course, the sustainability, these are two parts that I don't want to say they are more important, but they are more uh, the, the first elements that it's becoming a new, a huge, it's a urgent uh, matter right now to be solved. So how can you match with the, key, the four key types of digital transformation? It's more related, so let me say sustainability is more related to cultural organizational, or to business model so or physical aspect it's more related to business process or to cultural organizational how can you combine these elements absolutely so it's not about one or the other 
the physical aspect of doing business, it's always going to be important, but it's about reimagining, giving your customers the chance to imagine and feel and utilize technology in a new way. It's really a merger of systems. It's ways to automate your business processes. There's new ways to think about your business model, taking things online, having virtual online subscriptions, doing these type of virtual events to generate revenue and, and business for your brand. And it's really that all of these changes relate to creating a different culture and organizational structure. It's truly a new point of view. This is what we're looking at on a global level. Yeah, it's a truly a new point of view. I like, I like your, your sentence. Because a new point of view doesn't mean that we have to change what we sell. It doesn't mean that the physicality is not the most important element. But it's really that you upgrade all of these kind of processes. Absolutely. I think it is very, very, it's very interesting and very important. But now let me go a little bit inside. And now I want to, I want a Jacqueline opinion, but also Shivan opinion about how practically brands can implement these processes. So in the immediate, so in a short time, Absolutely. Jacqueline. So I think your number one piece here is the way that you empower your employees by fostering creativity and fueling productivity. The main thing that everyone should have in the front of their mind is that innovation and technology will help your organization and your culture and your team and employees to become more productive. Things can be automated. You can learn how to use data and information to have a stronger business model, to be more successful in the work that you do. So it's really thinking about how you are going to foster that creativity and fuel productivity by implementing these new tools. And of course, that takes time, communication, the action plan, engaging your your employees and your organization. But that's a that's a main point that I would like to, to state. And Shivang, I'd love to hear your thought too. Absolutely. So I completely agree with everything you said about empowering employees and the organization itself. So I, I don't have anything more to add to that. I will instead speak to uh, helping customers adapt and optimizing operations. Because um, customers can get overwhelmed when you give them too much too quickly. So it, it's about taking small steps at a time. What do we know? We know that customers today are comfortable shopping for, for clothing online. They're comfortable shopping for electronics online. So we know that they are comfortable with online shopping. Now we just need to give them a little bit more of a nudge so that they adapt to shopping in virtuality rather than just in a 2D space. Now, surprisingly, um, or maybe not so surprisingly, uh, using 3D augmented reality, virtual reality, and so on to shop has shown a conversion increase of 250% for wow. consumers. So that's two and a half times more consumers that are actually buying products when they can virtually interact with them in 3D. Now, this is something that consumers don't need to adapt to. They need to learn a little bit about engaging with objects in a 3D space. And this is where we are trying to help uh, with big things, where we're trying to help consumers envision themselves as avatars, envision clothing in a digital format, see how it looks, behaves, and moves, experiment with different materials, and so on. From a business standpoint, allowing your customers to do means optimizing your own costs and operations. Why is that? Because you can have your customers instantly try on hundreds of products, and you don't need to manufacture those until you are ready. Your customers can pre-trial, they can place orders before you manufacture a single piece. You, this ties into the data that the employees get from your customers so they know which pieces to actually go in, take into manufacturing and which ones that, that need to just be taken off the design pipeline. 
And this kind of data is invaluable. And with the internet today, you can get feedback on this from millions of customers. Whereas earlier, maybe you were limited to a few hundred or few thousand customers that actually could only experience the products in person. I think that's wonderful. And, and my point that I wanted to kind of bring to, up to you both, especially on the operational side. So if we know that the, these innovations and in technology are more sustainable and affect your bottom line in a positive way, why aren't brands utilizing more of these technologies that are out there on the market? Um, it, from what we've seen, it's just because most brands don't know about this or they're scared. They're scared that it's expensive. It's scared, they're scared that it's difficult to implement, that they have to undergo too many organizational changes to bring in some of these products. When the truth is they are far cheaper than your current operations. They are very, very quick to deploy into apps or websites and this, uh, this is something that you can do while not sacrificing a single method that exists in your day-to-day -day operations. And once this is known and this comfort level develops, we will see a huge amount of adoption of this. And I encourage that change now more than ever because this is a time for transformation for the entire world. And as, as, you, as we keep saying, a new point of view. Correct, correct. And I, uh, I think you touched a couple of elements. Sustain a culture of change. But in this case, let me start from the bottom of this slide that everyone can see because I like to, to, to just uh, subverse the, the rules. But you touched another point, prices and cost. Because when you said the company are scared, and then Jacqueline was talking about uh, implement creativity, and then you, Shivang, as well, you were talking about it's important to engage the employers, the people that work. So the scaring aspect is how much investment I have to do as a brand, as a company in the supply chain to apply these technologies? Um, so from, from my uh, standpoint is that it's actually very, very little. Um, your upfront costs are probably a, a tenth or less than you actually manufacturing products that might not sell. Let me give you a little bit of data on this. 84% of returned products end up destroyed. Why is this? Because that change has not been brought in. Now, if we bring in this change, uh, how much can it save you on destroyed products, on returns? And when you bring this into the larger picture, you see that your costs on this are actually minute. When you see the larger organizational picture, you could be spending less than 1% of your entire manufacturing budget to deploy something that is completely digitally transformational, will uh, help you sell more, reduce returns, and be able to reach far more consumers around the world for marginally more cost. <laughs> That's breaking the stereotype. I think there's so many brands that want to implement this and that kind of goes back to the digital climate change and creating that action plan. What do brands need to get ready to bring this technology to their website? What needs to be prepared? And really, what are some hard number price ranges that you can share? Because I think that it's, to, it's really changing the perspective of how brands can implement and how it affects their bottom line. And I think there's a, a huge misconception in terms of technology, augmented reality, bringing in these avatars that it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and it does not. So uh, to give you a hard number, 
Um, we are actually working with several customers at this point of time, and we're giving them digital showrooms where they can experience these products. The cheapest that it starts off with is about $1,000. That's it. It's you're very not talking affordable. 100,000, you're talking 1% of that. And, and this is the actual reality of what technology can, can help you do. That's incredible. This is incredible. It's, it is. Because, you, you know, online marketplace now are going on. So everyone are facing the way to present their product in so many different marketplaces. But now we are talking about the content. So the numbers that you are giving to us are very, are very affordable. So they are affordable in terms of the fact that you can also plan short term, short term, medium and longer. So just start, test and, get, and again, another part of proportion of your collection and go ahead again. So this is very visible. This is very tangible in a certain way. I have a question to Jacqueline. Uh, what about the United States? Do you see that this kind of digital transformation, which it's usually something in the blood of the American consumer, American designer, it's something that it's, I don't wanna say exploding, but it's incrementing or not, or in which kind of direction? maybe fashion, maybe other types of uh, targets? Absolutely, and that's a great question, Ori. Yes, it is happening a lot here in the United States. What we're seeing, e-commerce has taken over the market, direct to consumer, shoppable goods and products that are coming from social media, small capsule collections, made to measure, on-demand manufacturing. This is all happening. Customers are getting used to taking a quick selfie scan, understanding their measurements, understanding what size to order, having algorithms um, pick from items that they have hearted or liked or purchased in the past that are getting better at learning their body type. Americans are, are very comfortable with this new type of culture and innovation, especially the Gen Z generation. This is something that they've grown up with. They've grown up with a cell phone in their hands. So it's really that shoppable digital content that is taking over now. I do think within the next three years, we are going to see a lot more uh, digital runway shows, digital collection launches, these type of social events that we're seeing that Asia has been doing for years. It's slowly coming to the United States and consumers are seeing it more and more. We're already seeing that the fashion world are only going to do two collections per year. So seasons have changed. The, this is an entirely new world and perspective for this industry that we're operating in right now. But it's quite exciting to see how these innovations are coming into place. And the fact that smaller brands are able to use this technology and they do not have to be afraid of the cost or the preparation to create an action plan because it is quite simple. So that's why I'm so grateful to have this conversation here at Linea Pell to be working with big things and a fabulous forward trend forecaster like yourself, Orietta, to make this technology available for everyone. It's really interesting. It's really interesting, Jacqueline. It's very interesting, Shiva and Chandalekha. And I want to take uh, this opportunity because in the, our 30 minutes just went in, <laughs> in seconds. So which means we just passed in a very short time. This is because they are so intriguing and so interesting. So I want to step inside of the fact that thanks to all of you now we build something like a new community so big things will support us all the time when we have company that want to try and we want to enter in this type of application of technology and also with Jacqueline and his partner Vika Shah we created this very unique uh, e-space, uh, e-training. So maybe uh, 
Uh, Jacqueline, you want to say something about this kind of a training that you will have the next July 29th? Yes, absolutely. We're very excited to come. Um, a very close colleague of mine, Vikas Shah, who is a data and digital marketing expert, we're going to lead this e-workshop in branding and sales and turning marketing and financial data into useful information for brands. So I have so many brands that are interested in learning more, but they want to know what are the tools they should be utilizing now and how do they start implementing it? So we're going to cover all of that. And really, just to say my true purpose and what I do within Creative Duality is to help brands and entrepreneurs find their magic by connecting the dots and exploring new frontiers and innovations between business and branding. So we will show you how to get started. We will talk about those tools and technologies that are out there and give you the roadmap for transformation. So I think this is really, really great. And we are really glad that with, with you guys, we started this conversation one month ago. Now we put it some new points and then we will go ahead. But our goal is to arrive to you next September 2023rd, when a new point of view will, will be physical also in Milan with, a, with so many live streamings events and live streaming situation that give us the opportunity really to uh, to see and touch, touch and see. So working and staying together between virtuality and uh, physicality in terms of the new world, it just started. So thank you so much, Shiva. Thank you so much, thank Chandralika. You. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Thank, Thank you so much, Arieta. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thank and you so uh, much. Pleasure. Stay yeah, safe. The new greeting of the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you very soon in a virtual and physical world. Bye. Thank you, Lenny and Paul. Thank you, Arieta. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And thank you to all the participants. <laughs>